Hey guys, hello and welcome to my first video on my channel. This is a instructional video, a very in-depth instructional video about the creation of the BF109. You can either do the F2 or the G series. This is a very in-depth video and very long, so if you're looking at this for entertainment value, it's probably not going to be there. Other build videos will be a lot shorter because they will be sped up and I will only cover what's specifically different about each plane from here on out. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing I like to do is cut out all my formers using the, uh, the stencils. Just cut them out, flip flop on both sides so that you can get a nice former. Next thing we want to do is sand all this out. So I've got my sanding block, I've got some 150 grit, and uh, I'm going to go over all the edges before we actually cut them apart. That way they're nice and smooth and we can get rid of uh, all the disgusting cuts. Alright, so I got all these sanded. Let me get this out of the way. The next step is to go ahead and finalize these. On your front ones you'll notice that there is a square cutout on all of these and they stack on the main fuselage piece. Um, so we're going to go ahead and cut all those out. Some of these have holes which they need to be punched through and you can do that with a barbecue skewer because that's what we will be using to stick through there. With the tail section pieces, uh, all of them have these 5mm lines. Just cut all that out. You're basically cutting them in half and then on all of them except for the E piece, there's a little slot right here. You'll see why that's there later. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting these out. My uh, 3D printer is going on in the background. Hopefully it's not too much of an issue. One disclaimer I should go ahead and say is that Canopy is kind of on your own. If you don't have a 3D printer, then you are on your own as far as the canopy. And sorry, but there are so many different ways to do a canopy that uh, I didn't include plans for. I have STL files for them. But that's about it. Oh, another thing I should mention on these tail section pieces, this airplane, um, the BF-109 F2, or just the BF-109 in general, is balanced very close to its center line, or I should say to the, to the center lift. So, if yours ends up a little tail heavy, well, that just shouldn't happen. Because I've done so many tests to try and get this thing as nose heavy as I possibly can. Again, the 3D printed parts, even the aesthetic parts, uh, like the exhaust and the intakes, radiator intakes, I printed at a higher infill. I think I did a 50% infill on those guys. And that's to try and get as much weight forward as I can. Uh, as far as finishing this thing up, and I'm not talking about like just putting the skin on and leaving it, I'm talking like actually finishing it and putting uh, a coat a coat of uh, epoxy on it. It adds so much weight to the tail that I'm just trying to counteract it. And if you don't want to do that because it adds too much weight, then almonds don't. But I like the finished look. I like the uh, fact that it's a little bit more durable and this thing has so much power to begin with that the extra weight really is not going to affect the flight performance that much but to make sure that it doesn't become super tail heavy um, I've done this on a previous model and this is definitely optional um, I don't think it takes off that much weight what I've done is essentially just like cut holes in these, try and hollow them out as much as possible. You lose a little bit of durability and you lose a little bit of weight. So it's hard to tell if it's worth it. I'm going to do it on this one, um, but again that's optional. If you're not finishing it, don't worry about it. it it's weighted fine. Okay, I'm on my last one, which is C. Uh, one thing I should mention while cutting this one out is this bottom part right here. You can make that, you can cut that as far as you need to for your battery to fit in. I'm using a 2200 milliamp 3 cell. Anywho, if you're using a bigger battery, which I do not recommend, you can cut this out an extra 10 millimeters down to the bottom. Not gonna hurt anything. Okay, I finished cutting out all my holes. So they all look like this. Kind of flimsy. Again, it's optional. 
but I have lost... Hmm, I've lost 3.2 grams. Amazing. Okay, so um, this is just kind of to help finish it, to help keep the balance right. Now, if you're doing a regular one, um, I'd say just keep it in because it, it's a little bit extra work. This is one where all the farmers in the back are whole, and then this is one where I've done this to them, and there's really no strength difference. Like, you can't really feel it. It's not squishy at all. It's still hard. You can kind of see in there that it's hollow. And as far as this right now without the battery in, it's it. you can't really notice difference in the center of gravity. So, whether it helps or not, I don't know, but I like to think it does, so I'm going to do it anyway. Alright, moving on. This is the, uh, the power pack. Here's the C motor with the ESC in it. If uh, you don't have a printer, again, you're going to have to build one of these. 34 millimeters by 34 millimeters with holes, and one's 32, so they're 32 millimeters apart. I don't remember what it was from here to here. Uh, you can do some measurements on the nose to figure that out, or I'll just put them on the screen. Uh, it just screws in, and then I have the nose cone on right now with the regular slow fly prop. This uses two servo screws. You should get some servo screws in the servo packages that you get with the C-Pack, and that's what I've used. And they two of them just screw right on to the base of the nose cone, and pretty much it if you have a 3d print if not if you want to find a nose cone it is 60 millimeters or more specifically 59 millimeters okay so we can go ahead and get rid of our formers for now um, the reason why I like to take care of this stuff first is because it's if we do the whole body and then you're doing this the, the body just kind of sits there and it's fun to be able to put these on once you finish all right put them aside and We'll talk about the tail section real quick. So I've got uh, the stencil right here, and this is what it'll look like when you're done. Again, I don't cut anything out right here because I want to sand this. Same with the uh, same with the elevator. Uh, it's a matter of just mirroring this, like all the formers, and cutting this out. I've already sanded all this, cut it out, and I've put this little piece on here. This is a 3D printed. Um, I don't know what you'd call it, but essentially since your control horn is only on one side and this is so thin right here that you don't want it to like wobble, so this is just something in there glued in place to help it. Again, if you don't have a 3D printer, um, you can cut a little slot right on the inside and you can stick a barbecue skewer across. Uh, I've done that before and that seems to work. When you cut this out, sand it first before you do this and then you're going to want to cut that down the middle and bevel at least one side uh, and that's going to be on the same with the tail section it's going to be cut right here cut along this little thing and that's cut all the way through and then you can bevel in here i'll show you what that looks like later um, as far as this piece you get this from the picture uh, this is the full tail and this slides on just like that and then this guy sits underneath here now you understand what this little slot's for it goes on there and, uh, well, it goes up there, but, uh, it helps, it helps keep a really nice stable tail. Okay, now let's talk about the fuselage, which I haven't cut out. It's still right here. Uh, there's no markings on it as far as, uh, like spacing and stuff like that. You'll see that on the picture. Uh, the best way to do that is just pick a corner and then do a line up, I think. Uh, okay, so... This center line is constant all the way through. I did it 113 millimeters up from the edge of the actual foam board, and then you can run all of your measurements off from there. Uh, you just kind of have to follow it and piece it together. Uh, it might not be the easiest way to do it, but it's too big to cut out and make a stencil of, so that's how it is. Same with the wing. You pick a corner, and then you build off of it. So I picked this as my corner and I built off of it. If I was going to make another wing, since this is just half, you could pick this corner if you wanted to, and you can actually get the, the whole wing off one foam board. So the whole thing will fit off one foam board, and that, like that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the fuselage as a whole. I'm not gonna cut out any of these guys yet. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. So finish cutting it out. Uh, looks something like this. You got a little hole right here and a little sliver right there. With all these little guys, these are five millimeters and these cut out and fold in on themselves. This, do not cut these out. These actually get cut out on this side because they, they bend backwards this way. Whereas all of these you can, all of these ones you can cut because they fold in on it. So I'll go ahead and cut it out. We'll walk you through what it's gonna look like. Okay, one thing I should mention uh, that I forgot about was to go ahead and draw center lines on the back as well as these lines here for your nose A, B, and C. Draw them on this side because this is where they're actually going to line up. You won't really see these ones on the inside. Also, this five millimeters, uh, slice that off and that's for the nose. It's easier to do this when it's not all floppy. All right, we're now at the super floppy stage. Uh, I've got everything cut out. You'll notice that these all gone at right angles and then I've got missing foam on this side. When these get folded down, like so, this piece kind of goes in like that. So this paper on this side is very important and try your best not to tear it because it kind of like just goes to the side. And uh, the best way to glue that is to actually fold it all the way back on itself Pour a little glue in the crease and then fold it up and use your 90 like that and then make sure that it can still pivot down on the paper and then when you do that for this one they come together and that's when you do this top piece last so these stand up on itself like this but this one it goes over These guys also stand up on themselves like this. They just stand right up, 90 degrees. Um, these things, uh, in the plans, I have them a bit long, so you can cut them down to whatever size you need them. I don't think it matters in the final build, so you can cut them to whatever size you want. But at least long enough to where uh, you can get some glue in there for the other parts. Just uh, sometimes this sticks over and the wing sits on these and you don't want that. You'll see later. Okay, another thing I should mention before you glue these on, this is the uh, tail section piece I talking about earlier. And what I did, it's easier to do before you glue it because of these things. Uh, cut a hole right here and then creased it with a barbecue skewer. This is the tail piece and you can see how it goes together like that. Like that it interlocks and then I, to add some strength, like to glue this in between that so it essentially sandwiches these two, I should say, it sandwiches the barbecue skewer and adds a little bit of strength to this joint. I just finished gluing everything together and it should look like this. I also put on the tail section already, gluing that in like so with the sandwich barbecue skewer. Our next step, our next step is gonna be finalizing our tail piece and putting it in. There's not a whole lot of work there to be done. Okay, so to finalize the tail, I cut it out, beveled one side, and I cut out my slot right here with this little groove. And we are going to bend the elevator all the way over. Do this from your perspective. Insert it in like so, and then try, do your best, it should be pretty easy if you made this with enough room, and fold that over like that, and then I'm just going to shove glue, um, I'm actually going to get a scrap piece to fill in this little thing right here, glue all that, glue all that with your right angle, and then it's ready to go on the body. Alright, check it out, so I've got my tail section finished and on. The next step, we got to install some servos. So right here is where our canopy is going to go, and that's where I found the best spot to do it. I think on here, I have, I've done it on here before, and it, um, again, with the whole trying to put weight as far as I can, I just moved it up. So it goes on here, and there's two ways of doing it. Uh, you could have the servo top on this side, in which you have to route it through like that, or you could have the servo top on this side, in which you could have it just go straight to the back. 
problem with it on this side, depending on how you do the canopy, you might not be able to access your servo, because I like to glue my canopy down. Um, with this side, you'll be able to access your servos. You can move them if you need to, or swap them out. But uh, I go through these pretty fast, so I'm going to do my tops of the servo on this side, and uh, that way my wires are sticking out this way. So once we put that in, we will move on. Look, I found some servos. Okay, once you have your servos in place, next thing I like to do is to add some Velcro just to keep my receiver in place and then some Velcro strips to help maintain the battery in place. So I like to do it for the battery, is to put Velcro along this wall and this wall because your battery is going to sit along here and then that'll keep it pushed up against your motor mount and it shouldn't have any problem with that falling out. So once you got all of your favorite ways of securing electronics down, it's time to move on to adding the formers. And this is when it kind of starts to take shape. So C, former C, I'm going to slide on this guy, and this is a crucial component to keeping your nose stable. So when you glue that on, you want to glue the backs here, on here, and when it sets, you want to make sure that your nose is aligned properly with the rest of the body. That's a big one from here. With D, it's going to slip right behind this edge right here, in front of your servos and it's going to glue onto the siding right there and then your firewall is going to come up from the other way and it's going to glue on right here also next to your servos and this is going to hinge. You'll notice all three of these have uh, holes in them and I don't have a full barbecue skewer on me but you will get a full barbecue skewer and you will snake that through the holes right here, glue those in place and that will be your strength keeping this from bowing. Uh, all these other ones are pretty self-explanatory. E, that's not E, E goes like yonder, and then all of these glue on just like this, lined up so that you'll notice there's, there's only one line for these, and I'll fix that in future builds, unfortunately. Um, for the tail section, everything past E, you want to glue this side of the line and everything past C you want to glue this side of the line so that'll make sense when you put your nose on because your nose just goes straight on and then A will sit on this side of the line not on this side of the line. Let's go ahead and start gluing all that stuff together and we'll move on. Alright so I've got my C, my D, and my firewall already glued in and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put in these rods along here because I got a bit of floppiness. This barbecue skewer wasn't long enough and I kind of just eyeballed these guys in and it gave me a little weak section. So before I start working on the rest of them, I'm going to strengthen this so I don't break it. And I'm just going to go ahead and put these in right now. So you notice that it does have a little bit of a flex to it. It should bend the barbecue skewer. It's not perfect. Um, I find that that adds a little bit more strength too. Okay, so I've got those in, and they're not glued, and it's it's still flexing a little bit, and I want to make sure that I get this right. Um, it's kind of a matter of eyeballing it at the same time. So, holding it, we're going to get the barbecue skewer to one end, and I'm going to tack each side of one end the barbecue skewer. This is the easiest way I've found to glue these things. Twist it, and then push it in at the same time. So we're getting glue on all sides of the skewer and then shoving it in and holding it. And I'll do the same to the other one. Alright, so once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and finish putting all the uh, formers on. Alright, I stopped an I. I've got one last one to put on and I'll tell you why. This guy is your last chance to get your tail section straight. If you eyeball it and it's crooked, this guy will fix that, okay? So we're going to lay down some glue right here. I'm going to lay glue down on the whole stem. And we're going to put our eye on there and press it all the way up against the tail. And then make sure that, that tail section is going in straight. And then just hold this awkward position until it dries. 
Okay, so we finished that. We got all of our formers on. One thing I do want to talk about, these guys right here, these are just the edges of the barbecue skewers, or the tips I should say, and I just put them on as supports to bridge this nose section and in between uh, C. So that takes an impact. Ideally, this is a little bit more stronger. And the next step would be to connect our linkages. So with the linkages, uh, you're gonna wanna put them in and then route them through. Uh, I'll go ahead and do one and then talk about it once I'm done. All right, so I've got one going through already connected to my rudder. So as you can see, I have put it and I've cut notches and zigzagged it or snaked it through to the other side. I use little coffee stir straws, which are like perfect size for housing uh, push-pull rods in my opinion. Cut notches, I think I used five of them. For this E one, I had to cut a hole in the top of E and I put it in. So I only have one of these sides has a Z bend on it that goes into my servo. And the other side is just flat because I like to use these adjusters on the back. They are the, just the easiest things in the world to work with. I'm all for that. And the reason I had to put it on the inside is because the canopy or the STL file that I printed out has a lip that goes along this. And if this is on the outside, it'll catch that lip and the canopy won't be able to see it right. So I did it on the outside. If you cut holes in here like I did, just be very careful putting these in. Uh, I think one of them I cut loose. That's what I wanted to show you. Also the reason for snaking it through is to uh, to keep tension on this. Sometimes if you do like a, a straight line through then this will have a lot of wiggle room and that's what I'm trying to cut out. So if you have too much wiggle room in your push-pull rods you're gonna get flexing and you're not gonna get a very stable surface. This isn't tightened so this is still moving but if it was tightened and it was, and you were able to do this, it's not what I would call okay. Uh, that's why I try to eliminate by snaking it through. Okay, so that wasn't annoying at all. Uh, I finished both the push-pull rods. Um, I have not tightened them. I will do that once I turn the servos on. The next step, uh, we've got to put these guys in, and we got to cut one out for this. So just get. Just get some barbecue skewers and put one out. This is where the uh, rubber bands to hold your wing on place will end up. So just glue these in place. Now this one up here, size it, but don't glue it in place. I like to leave it removable. You will see why later. All right, so I need to cut out all of the cardstock for the skin and we can start skinning everything. Um, yeah. All right, so I've got all of my skin pieces all cut out, but before we do that, we need to add a few of these little bits here, I and mean, these are on this page. Um, this A to B, B to C, and should be a, yeah, A to nose. Those should be pretty spot on, pretty accurate. However, these two guys up here, make them 10, but measure yours before you actually cut them out, because, you know, there's imperfections, and, uh, it gets a little bendy sometimes. So these longer ones are gonna go right here. We're gonna glue those in. These shorter ones are gonna go right here. We're gonna glue those in like that. These go underneath like so. And those get glued in like that and like that. Okay. And then I'll talk about this nose piece once we got two right here, two right here, and then the three in the front. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about, and this is for those 3D printers, is this gun piece. So once it's printed out, it's going to sit on top of the B. Um, just lop the top 7 millimeters off the B former, the B former, and plop that right down on there and glue it. There's a little bit of a, a thing so you can get your, your backing on that and try and get it. It's easier to put this on before you uh, skin it. That's the only thing. Uh, we're gonna start putting the skin on. So I like to do this from tail to nose, starting with this eyepiece. So all of these typically start from the top, except for this eyepiece, which starts from here, and that folds over like that. This is the most annoying part of this build, most likely. Uh, the best way to do it that I've found is just 
attack the centers and put them on as best you can and then just wait for that to completely uh, set and that will give you the best chance of making this nice and neat. Uh, from all these other ones, again it's top to bottom, so tack, tack, just let it sit and you have to be really patient with this, it's time consuming, just put on a movie. Uh, so, um, oops, I was, I was gonna cover this, and then I put on a video, and I just realized just now that I forgot to talk about it. The 3D piece for the guns, uh, it's rough to put on, I'll be honest. Cutting out these holes in the skin, and then where this thing sits on the B, I think I put 5 millimeters down, and I just, like, five millimeters off the topmost point of the B former and then I glued that on there and then yeah it's it's kinda tricky to get on unfortunately all the other stuff is fairly simple comparatively you can see how far I've gotten I'll just go ahead and finish this one up and then uh, also forgot to do something else but I'll talk about it right now <laughs> so with these holes right here for your motor mount it's best if you glue down one side and then stick a barbecue skewer in there on this side, like where the pointy, pointy part is. And when it sticks out here, use any cutting tool and just cut that hole out. Try not to puncture it through. It works better if you just cut a solid hole. And then uh, when you push that all the way through, then you glue this side on, flip it around, and do it from the other side. I forgot to do it on this side, so now I have to guess where the hole is at, and I'm not really looking forward to that. Cool. So I finished up the nose. I managed to get my four holes in there. That's for uh, the motor mount. And then this is actually the first time that I finished this gun piece and it actually looks halfway decent. This thing's tough to put on, I'm not gonna lie. If you're not that confident, just skip it. It's one of those things where I just thought it would be cool if it had it. But from here, we are going to put this aside I need to wait for my printer to finish up with the, uh, the other pieces, the exhaust and the two intake pieces. And then uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the wing. So that is this guy right here. I've got this one. I've got one over here that I haven't cut out. And I'm going to go ahead and put this one together for you guys. Cool, so literally while I was going to get my wing, my printer finished up these exhaust pieces. Uh, I guess this one's on this side for here, and this is gonna go about right here. The C to B template, yeah, has lines on the actual template of where these line up to. Pretty much the same on the other side. Anyway, I'll finish these glue up later. Let's talk about this wing. This is a pretty basic wing that I completely messed up. The template, has the slot for the servo right here that controls your aileron. I think on this wing, I'm gonna do something a little bit different, but this is definitely an option. Uh, as you fold it over, you just run the uh, harness down and your servo wires, and then you fold it over. So just like this one, you're gonna have two creases, and these are your uh, airfoil, and then you're gonna have a crease here, which is beveled on both sides, so that it can easily, or more easily, fold in on itself. The spar goes along here and should end right where your servo's at, so you can use your spar as a reference. Your aileron is gonna be this outermost one right here. If you want flaps, you can do this. Uh, optional is another piece for the, I think the radiators, but it's an intake and they go right here. But I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do it and then I'll talk about it. Because if it doesn't work, I'm probably not going to talk about it. Alright. So, I should mention before I start cutting these, since I've already cut this one out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to join them. And I'll probably put some tape right here. I'm going to sand all my edges and try and get them as identical as possible. Alright. Um, so I've gotten this far. I've gotten the tracks in and they, uh, they feel good. It was kind of a trial and error sort of thing of picking one up and then clamping this down and making sure that it's not clamping on the line. 
Uh, I just didn't want unwanted friction, you know. And then I forgot that I should mention the uh, the spar right here. It's just kind of eyeballed in. It's the middle of the two grooves right here, and then not all the way down to the base, but just a little before it, and you basically get it. If you notice on the template, there are some marks here on the top line and the bottom line right here, and that's where these edges are going to go so that you get the wings uh, the same. Because I've made some before that weren't. It's awful, and this is such an easy way to do it. Oh, that runs so smoothly. First time. This one was a pain in the butt, and this one's working so great. When you glue this thing down, you're going to want to fill these grooves with uh, glue. You want to fill this bevel with glue. Uh, the top of the spar with glue, and then the back of this guy. So when you press everything together, it stays. And then uh, if you're doing the servo out here, you're going to want to cut it out. Cut out, let's see, this one has it. You're going to want to cut this guy out. And then when you fold this over, go ahead and fold it over. Make sure that your servo fits in there. And then just glue the servo to the top in between the grooves right here. And then you can run your servo line along the spar. I just used tape, and I taped the wire down. And then I put the harness on because, uh, the ones that they gave you, they don't go all the way out, so you have to use the harness. And then I just take the harness on either side. Uh, where that becomes a pain in the butt, see this this way is a little bit easier. You can see my groove here, this is where my servo is going to go. And then it hooks up right here. And then that's going to work. I'm kind of excited about this, first time doing it. So, when we glue these together, you're going to end up with two halves. Like so. And if you're doing the servo at the tips, or out here, you're going to have your harness coming through and you're going to have to just cut like a little notch on either side and then you can pull or keep that harness through. And then on this back side, uh, you know what, I can just show you, because I got a camera. Alright, one sec. Okie dokie, so I've got, got my wings put together. And we're going to need some tape. Okay, so we've got some tape. Definitely going to use this stuff, because this stuff is good. If you have solo tape, not good. Packing tape. Um, okay. So, at this point, if you're using the servos out here, these pieces are going to be connected through that harness. It's just... That's kind of the pain of doing it that way. This way, I guess. I don't even I don't even have my servos in. I'm just gonna put them in afterwards. So we're gonna line these up. And this one actually lines up really well. You wanna make sure if they're the same size, that they're if the the bottom is protruding a little bit more, it could become like problematic. Uh, you want them roughly the same. If, if they're not, just take your sanding block, sand them all down. Make sure that when you do it like this, put them like this, that they're basically the same. You can sand them down like this to make sure you can see this side is protruding just a little bit. I might want to take that down a little bit, but it is a bottom, so I don't think it'll be a problem. So to start this, turn them over, get some tape, uh, healthy amount of tape. And put one as solid as you can. Make sure you line up this side as best you can. Press it nice and snug against the other wing. Really put that tape on there. If you mess up and you have to peel the tape up, just get it another piece. Because this, this is an important part of keeping the wing together. Okay, now that is gonna press on the centerpiece. You see when you lift it up, when we get our wing tool, I'm using just a, I think it was a 112 millimeters up. So that wing tool, when it's flat against the table, is gonna go up on one tip, and that is gonna start our curve. We wanna make sure we're keeping this wing flat against the table as we do that. So. In order to get that curve, we need to split that open, and we need to just glop glue right down the middle. Make sure um, you don't burn out your tape on the other side, because you can melt it and then come apart, and then you have to do it again, and it's a pain. 
So just get a nice glue on at least one of these sides and then we're going to hold that in position for a little bit and make sure that it's nice. It's nice. You can always add glue to the top later. If you have any holes on the top but they're not lining up right, then maybe you need to do some more sanding before you even get to this step. There we go. Put that on the table so now it's nice. Get our wing tool. Prop that up. Make sure you're really pressing down. Where's this guy? We'll scrape off that extra glue right there. Go right there. Go right on this side. And if you want to, you can put some weight on this wing. Leave it, but uh, there we go. So it should should keep its form pretty well. Just to top it off. Um, again, if you have any holes, I do not. This actually, one actually came together really nicely. Um, but I'm still going to just go ahead and lay some on the seam on the top and take my piece and smear it across, getting all that excess off. Just getting a nice line of glue going across the whole of it. Got a little bit of a flex to it, and the best way to get rid of that is more tape, actually. Glue is not going to be the main thing bonding this wing together. So sometimes I like to over-exaggerate this wing fold so that when we tape it, it sits a little bit right. So I'm going to put a piece towards the leading edge. Make sure to get that as flush as possible. And you want that nice, tight, that's solid right there. You can put a piece on the back here if you want. I guess I'll do it, why not? So we're not quite done yet. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and connect or put some uh, control horns. I have some 3D printed ones, but they're the wrong size, so I gotta print some more before I do it. Uh, I really like the adjusters on the ailerons as well, if you have those. There's a section right here. Um, just take some barbecue skewers, cut them up, and glue them on right there. Uh, that'll protect your edge from the rubber bands. And we also need one up here, and then we're going to need two that go along here. And I will go ahead and cut this thing up and show you what I'm talking about. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I put this one on these two guys, but I haven't put the other three on. So these three, you might notice this on this guy. Uh, there's one right here, and then there's two back here. And that, I got servo form around. So that corresponds to a hole we've put behind the C former. So this front edge slides in there, and then the two on the trailing edge of the wing are gonna fit up here and that keeps the wing from yawing when we're uh, when we're flying because this you can put some force on it and I was having some issues with that before and this is kind of a simple fix if you want to go above and beyond by all means but uh, this has worked out well for me so that's what I'm gonna keep doing this is not the one I've been working on before this is one with a, uh, a single coat of fiberglass resin on it. This is a little hatch I made. It's not in the plans. You can do whatever you want for this tail section. But fiberglass resin, you can see it's shiny. Uh, I've got all of the 3D printed pieces on. This is actually the G model. The only difference is, oh, I shouldn't say the only difference, but a few of the differences are it's the, uh, the engine intake. And if you notice on the exhaust, the F version for some reason only has this lip right here over the exhaust downwards. The G version has it on both sides. So that's really the only difference. The intake right here is the same. The canopy is the same. And I think a lot of the, like the nose cone, the underwing intakes are the same. I haven't put those on. Uh, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. I made them if you guys want to put them on. But one of my ideas I had was to uh, to use this tape and bridge this gap right here to make it look a little bit more flush and then you would put the radiator on top of that if you put it on right now then it would be like be in front of this little lip and it wouldn't really look good but i thought about using resin on this and the thing the difference is i'm getting a little off topic but the difference is 
this cardstock like soaks in the resin and does a pretty good job of holding it. Whereas this stuff does not soak in the resin. And depending on what you're using, it'll leave a lot of streakage. So if you're using like a really cheap brush uh, or anything like that, I used a foam brush on this, which was a bad idea. I don't ever do it. The uh, I used a hairbrush on another one, and it, it just left a bunch of streaks on any uh, like the tail section that I did. It didn't come across because the tail section is the only part on this build that's like this wing where it's just foam board, and for some reason the epoxy did not soak in there, and it just stayed on top. It was lumpy, so. I was thinking with the tape going down here that I could just epoxy that whole thing, but I kind of thought against it, so I don't think I'm going to use the, the wing radiators. It would look cool though. To finish this, I'm going to spray on a, uh, a final coat, maybe or a hardening coat. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. I should also point out that since this is the old style wing, this is how I had the harness. It's connected through here, and then the uh, servo wires run along that spar and come out here, and they go on the uh, adjusters, like I was saying. All right, so I put my servos in, test them, they work pretty well. Uh, I just don't have any control horns to work with right now, so I haven't finished that. You know, I think on my next one, I did score where this straw is coming through, and then tried pressing the straw in there to give it more of an angle going outwards because this is like right along that. I feel like it's just going to create friction. It doesn't need to be. Try and force the straw more towards this paper into this crease. I didn't get it. I didn't think it was going to be that important, but I think it would help out a lot. Maybe on my next one, I'll, I'll be more careful when I do that. Like I was saying earlier, we're going to take our tip and just punch it straight through. Well, it's actually harder to do than I thought. This one came together nicely. It doesn't have to be big, it just has to be enough to where it sits in there and keeps the wing from yawing. It's not it's not like keeping the wing in place, you know. So it just needs to be a little bit and then when you cut that, don't I would glue it and then push it into your C former at the same time so that they sit nice. That is, you know, once you cut the hole first in the back of the C former, then, then fit that in. As far as this one, I just took some strips and I placed them here and here, glued them in place, went to the airplane, cut slots where I ended up gluing them, and they fit snugly, uh, just like a little V slot with uh, um, your knife or anything. And, uh, See what else we have to do. That's basically it. Let me go get it. Yeah, this slot right back here. It's open and you can put whatever you want in there. Easiest thing to do is to get a piece of uh, cardstock with a little bit of a, a lip going into here and just glue it along the back right here. And then that can fold over. Just have slots so when you put your wing on, that cardstock lays against here, and then the rubber bands can go through slots and hold it on. Let me get the other one, and I'll show you what I mean. So here's one I have already finished, and I've flown, and it flies great. So this one that I said don't glue in, you're going to put that stick in here, followed by two rubber bands. Slide them in. Before I was thinking just like glue it in, and then have the rubber bands on the outside, but trying to hold these rubber bands and keep the wing on is, is it's a hassle. So here we go. I'm not going to connect the aileron because I'm just putting the wing on. So this little barbecue skewer tip slots right into the sea former and then my flap goes over like so. So take my rubber band, see if I can do this. sitting in C. I've got that sitting firmly. I don't have the barbecue skewers on the back one. This is why I wanted to do it on this one because this thing's getting a bit torn up. And those rubber bands sit on those guys. This comes over here, sits like that. 
And then I just take these rubber bands, put them over the flap like that, and it sits, sits down on flight. And that's pretty much the whole build. Um, Alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I know that was long, but I hope you finished something that you're proud of and that looks good. And again, there will be more uh, planes to come. So, have a good one.